Welcome to the Kingdom Business Forum, a program where we equip believers to advance the kingdom of God on earth through business. I'm Vicki Norris. I'm Patrice Sage. Patrice, this month we are covering the topic of hope. I think it's so important in the life of marketplace believers because on our show, you know, we feature all kinds of marketplace ministries and businesses doing business God's way. And, and sometimes I think the folks who are going through personal crisis or even business crisis look at that and they, you know, we want them to be inspired, but really maybe they're just overwhelmed. They think I could never get there because look at, look at the pit I'm in right now. And so I really wanted us to do a series on the, the gutsy stuff, the hard stuff, uh, because I think all too often, you know, institutionally, we kind of ignore the hard stuff and we, um, we don't really focus on the trials and the tribulations that people go through. So uh, why do you think it's important for, for us to give airtime to this subject? Why is it important that we talk about the hard stuff as a body, as a family? Well, first of all, Vicki, the Bible, what makes the Bible unique and authentic is that it's not just a story of victories. Mm. It's a story of adultery, broken families, uh, personal crises, um, you know, prison, slavery. Uh, I mean, in this book, if you want to discredit our God to say he's a bad father, this book can give you enough evidence. Wow. <laughs> right? But, but, but part of that is that the only way for God to show redemption is for him to expose the muck. Mm. But what's interesting, though, Vicki, why I think it's important for us to share about this is because as Christians, we don't want to talk about the muck. Oh, it's so true. And so we're actually going contrary to the plan of the Father when we want to hide and package uh, the muck I think this could be the most important show we do this year. Well, that's what I felt. Is this like this is what's on God's heart? Is the hopelessness that most people? I don't think yeah. some people, no, no, Patrice. No. I yeah. think most people. And if you've ever walked through a dark valley, and I know I have, it's like until you go through that dark valley, you don't realize that there is pain in every house on every street. But once you experience a valley of your own. You, be, you gain the heart of the Father through that time if you go through it the That's way right. he intends. That's right. And, and then also it gives you, I mean, as a teacher and as a coach, uh, what gives you credibility. And one of the things we teach our BE teachers is that your struggle, your journey gives you credibility to teach others. Oh, the, yeah. So, you know, when I went through my own pains, right, in my early development in trying to walk God's walk. I mean, there were times, Vicky, where I would, I would catch the bus to teach biblical entrepreneurship. <laughs> and then and, I'm, and I teach the class, and I've just finished teaching people about all this stuff about what God can do. Right, and da, da, biblical da, da. prophet. That's right, biblical prophets, sustain businesses. And then you're getting out and your bus the, ticket. And <laughs> at the end of the class, I go catch the bus. My students are driving with their Mercedes. And they, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or I will go visit a client Right, and, and, and I'm coaching a client, and you know, I'm dealing, I'm helping them with their business and so forth and so on. And their bank account says $70,000 or $50,000, and my bank account says zero or negative or $1,500. You know, I'm helping, and that kind of experience, yeah, creates in you a dichotomy. Wow, you know, in a sense, of, wait a minute, God, are you only real to them and not to me? Wow. And during those moments, God says, Patrice. How will you, how will I know you're for real if I don't allow you to go through? Can you believe me, though you're not exactly seeing it in your own life as you think it should? Wow. You know, and more important than that, the other piece is this, is that m most of the people I work with are folks that have gone through mess and go through mess right and if we don't How talk you about relate it relate to then them we're not being real if you don't know if all you knew was you heard from god because i'll be frank when i heard first from god because i came from the world you know to, to become a believer i was on my way to become a millionaire in my mind <laughs> and along <laughs> the way i met this guy named jesus he rerouted my route and and now as a young believer i said now that i know the truth i know for sure i will be <laughs> right in other words now that I know the truth and I know the master, of course. Well, 
years of struggle. My wilderness didn't start pre-salvation. It started at the altar. Wow, that's good. Well, whew, this is good. See, you can tell this is going to be a good show. And we have in studio with us today our friend Jerry Tyndall. He is a building contractor turned roofer turned farmer. So I can't wait for you to hear his story because I felt it was so important, Patrice, for us to have real people, real businessmen, real businesswomen going through the muck who have on it, who are on a journey, who some of them are still in the pit, some of them are on their way out of the pit, some of them are on the other side. But I felt that it was so important for the viewers and listeners of the Kingdom Business Forum to hear the gutsy stuff. And so that's what I know we're going to be able to hear from you, Jerry, because you're a real dude, and that's why I like you. And so, um, and I just appreciate that you're out doing kingdom work. So I want to start with you just giving us a little background on kind of where you were between 2005 and 2007 as a builder. Sure. I, uh, I had my own building company for a total of nine years. And through that 2005 to 2007, um, we were selling around a million dollars a year, just under a million in high-end residential remodels. We had four employees. Um, we started a service division and we were doing handyman work out of one department and going full speed. And I believe at the time that my goal was to build a big company, make lots of money, and write checks for God, and just finance his work and his mission. So that was the track that I was on to doing. I can totally relate to that. And and we didn't even know what we didn't know back then, right? I, sure. I mean, I didn't know that as I was building my business that I really was seeking my agenda, not the kingdom agenda, because I didn't even know what the kingdom agenda was. Right. I want to be a good Christian while I'm building my business. I want to be moral. I want to treat my employees well and, and you know, be in love on our clients and everything. But I still hadn't, I didn't know what it was to join him in his work or to be performing his work on earth. Sure. Um, and it, it's so close, but it's a it's a major difference. Well, so. the model we watch is people make a lot of money and write big checks, and that's the glamour of working for God. Is you see people who have great businesses, and you go, I want to be like them, and that's yeah. what they're doing. They're writing big checks, and and uh, that's not wrong. That's yeah. c that's for some people, but I that was I just picked it up as that's what you do. Right, and that just was the recreating objective. something rather than getting to know God and saying, what would you have me do? And in, I like the way the you put it. You said that's the glamour. Yeah. And, so what I pick up in that is that all of us want to be in that position where we know and for our giving mm -hmm. because of how glamorizing that is. So sometimes you see entrepreneurs who have not started building yet, immediately they want to be in that position sure. because that's the glamour. You no, know, it's subconsciously we're doing it not because of a of sincere heart to give, as sincere mm -hmm. as we are at that moment, yeah. but because of the glamorous... Mm -hmm. of what that symbolizes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a key point there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. So um, things are going good. You've got four employees. Um, business mm -hmm. is great. We all know then what happened. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you could hear the flushing sound in the economy. Sure. So why don't you share a little bit about with us, with us what happened then? Yeah, it was interesting. Um, you know, when the economy first hit and the news was talking about it, it didn't affect me directly because we had contracts that often lasted six months to a year. And so we had plenty of work. Our guys were still working. We thought maybe even we weren't going to get hit by it because they were saying maybe a year it was going to rebound. And by that time, we'd complete what we have and be working again. And so uh, the, the method I chose to get through it was to sell a few things for the hard cash flow times and things like that and continue to wait for that next job to come up. And and as the well just started running dry and jobs were getting completed, I remember coming out of a customer's house and just realizing that it was going down. It was it was time to close our business at some point. And uh, a year before that, I had talked to my wife, not really knowing where we were taking our business. It was going really well. And I said, I just don't see this as our long term. I think God has something bigger or something different, but I don't know what to do with that. And uh, and so we kind of knew in our hearts that we were going to be seeking God and working for him, but not sure how it looked or what happened. And so we continued to just work in our business. And as it started going down, I did the natural thing, which is to work harder, work more, sell more, uh, market more, uh, even finance some marketing, which we had very little financed at the time. We didn't carry a lot of debt, but I said, we need to push harder. We need to do some home shows. And uh, so I just continued my own struggle of trying to do it myself. And I didn't spend a lot of time uh, seeking God. Even though I went to church, I believe God was in my life. I know he was there. I didn't seek his will or direction through the situation. Jerry, I think I know the answer to this, but let me ask you. 
tell us a bit about the circumstances during that time. Did you have a coach, a consultant working with you that was kingdom minded? In Not in setting? the beginning, no. Did you have um, an active plan that you looked at? And yes, you I did a, write a business plan a business of how plan. to get through the transition the and transition, things like that. You yeah. had that. Um, did, did you have an advisory board, folks that you could that could give you outside feedback on a constant basis as you're going through that? I had a couple people that I met with business accountability, business accountability goal, writing, goal writing, things like that, so but forth. not an outside board that would, would, that would speak kingdom-minded into my into life. Into life and so that. forth. So it's true. During this time, essentially, you're only doing what you know. Correct. It doesn't mean that if you had those things, it would have prevented the struggle, but it would have provided some early, earlier insight Correct. or even uh, some ways to... to to kind of discern God's will in the mm -hmm. midst of that chaos. Yeah. It, but it seems like you and your wife were on the same page during this time in the midst of the struggle. Could you talk a bit about that experience, you and your wife during this process of the marriage? Yeah, I believe as things were going down, I felt like the Lord gave me a pretty clear instruction, and that was to go through this time with integrity and honor to Him, and it was going to be a hard time for us. And, uh, and that so doesn't mean it was easy. So even though you didn't have some of what, you know, like a me or a Vicky in your life to kind of guide you, but prophetically, God kind of gave you the word. Correct. God was with me. And you held on Correct. to that. And yeah. that kind of, how important is that? Because, you well, know, Vicky, many yeah. people go through that. He had a clear, during that time, a clear word mm -hmm. that kind of kept them, though you didn't have all the mechanics. Tell us a bit about that, how important that was. I would say, imagine going through a horrible time and having one sentence to go back and look at each time, which is to go through it with integrity and honor towards our Father, and that people are watching me. So mm -hmm. I was able to, in the hardest of times, which I'm sure we're going to discuss, uh, I was able to draw on that and say, the Lord has asked me to go through this to be a light to others. And so it was an inspiration to not have bigger battles that can come out of this stuff, but... But it was a word. It was a word that could continue to guide me and go back to. How did the hardest time look? Mm -hmm. Tell sure. us about what I'll, was lost, yeah. what was the yeah. struggle. Don't hold anything yeah. back. Because there's people out there listening, <laughs> sure. seriously, right. that we can talk about hard times. We gloss right. over it, right? right. No, right. I believe as, as I talk about this next section, um, it's very real to me and very disturbing. And I believe that there's people listening to your show probably today that are driving through it, not even looking at these details and trying to mask them and push them aside. Mm. And I think they need to know that it's okay. Mm. I think they need to know that we're going through something that is okay. Mm. Failure can be good to an entrepreneur. That's it can right. teach you lessons. <laughs> it can right. start you in a new direction right. for your business. And um, I've been saying embrace your failures. Right, right. Make them your it's hard to do when you're in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, some of the hardest times, um, you know, we continued to lose everything. I mean, we were selling things one after another. Like to, what? To, I mean, we were started out with the small things. You know, we were selling tools, equipment. All my stuff was paid for, so it would pay another month the rent and mortgage. And so you, like, sold, like, your work truck. We sold um, dump trailers, this saws, nail guns. This is to take care of guns, stuff at home. Yes, to take care of my bills um, and to, to take care of demands because it was important to take care of my employees, to pay their workers' comp and wages and things. So I started selling everything that was extra as we scaled back crews. I sold their tools, their supplies. I sold the van as uh, we had a, an employee. What started kind of the, the pain was we had an employee go through a workers comp incident, gave some audits and charged us money towards workers comp to cover their bills for them. And they stayed out for a year um, collecting on a $100,000 claim that went against our company. And so those, I had to pay those bills. And so I ended up, you know, selling everything I could. And, and so at one point, we felt like we were supposed to sell our car, but we were kind of juggling, you know, one more job, we'll get cash flow out, things will work. Wow. I woke up that morning to one very real incident is my car was gone. They had come and picked it up, even though I had talked to the bank and everyone's story is they're right around the corner. And this is not just your personal vehicle, this is your This one was my personal vehicle. Your personal vehicle. Yeah, I lost our personal vehicle. So my wife got out to take the kids to school in the morning and her car was gone because I, I paid everything else first before me. So even my current my business was current to people, but, but my car was life. behind, my house was falling behind, and uh, we were negotiating a big contract for a kitchen remodel. They signed up and went with us, but it was only 70000 over eight months. Um, and I said before, we were doing a million dollars in sales, and we had 70000 to 80000 we sold that year. Wow. So, you know, over an 80% decrease yes. in income. So There's you can't so many people cut stuff saying, fast enough. You yeah. Know? There are so many people um, right now who are listening that are saying, I'm in that exact... Yeah. Boat. I know our own business dropped about 66%. Yeah. I didn't know my car time. would be gone. 
Yeah. I, I talked to the well, bank. I, I said, I almost have so. a job. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pay this. And so. And, and that's a good thing to note. Uh, creditors are not your friends. Right. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of what they say. And, and many yeah, times, sure. Christians, because we're truthful and honest, mm -hmm. we approach creditors as though if we're honest with them, mm -hmm. they'll be our friends. They're not your friends. Mm -hmm. Not that you're untruthful with them, right. but you got to be tough. Yeah. You got to be forward. And you can't let them intimidate you. True, true. Uh, and and cause many times people, tr you know, people, you can't tame a creditor. Mm -mm. He's an evil beast. Because, <laughs> and, and I want to be careful here because and the guy says, too many Christians lose out because they go in thinking they can tame a creditor. Right. They have a very worldly, aggressive, predatory sure. mindset mm -hmm. which says, I don't care who you are, you don't want to pay. And by the way, if you're a Christian, those don't pay anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so the more honest the smell you are, the yeah. more they think you're manipulating. Because right. the, 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 the mindset by which they look at it. Sure. You know, so I think it's important for our viewers to understand is that to, to be careful in that, the, those kind of situations, not to think that that creditor is their friend. Right, right. So we woke up in the morning to my wife getting ready to go to school with no car. It was wow. gone. Wow. We both looked at each other that morning and said the house was next. We knew it. It was a sick feeling in your stomach uh. to know that you're on the edge of turning things around. Your car is now gone. The house is next. I mean, what else? You know, we just go down the line of the things. And, and we were selling. I told you things. We sold our furniture. We sold our, our living room set, you know, a few hundred bucks on Craigslist to make yeah. good on our money. And Jared, let me ask you. Yeah. How's your wife feeling about it? I mean, yeah, I just was going to ask that. How's Erica What's going on at home? Tell us yeah. a bit about that. I mean, or what it, it sounds like. You yeah. guys are staying together, but as a what's woman keeping of faith, you guys together? As a woman of faith, it, it was communication. It was telling each other. As the ball started going down, we, we talked in our living room, and, and I tell anyone who goes through this to do the, have this discussion with your wife, and it's about what does the worst-case scenario look like? So you were open, you were transparent. We said, what does the bottom line, worst thing that's going to happen look like here? And it, is it in our value line for it to be divorce? No. So it's not going to be fighting and arguing. It's going to be our family living together in our camping trailer at a mobile home park until we can get our job going and move back into a home. That was the worst for us. That woman deserves a crown. Yeah, she, she does. does. She does. <laughs> she does. We, it didn't go to that point, let me tell you. We didn't make it there. But, but at least but, the fact that you could right. talk about that, yeah. you, right. you don't That's know huge. how many people, Jerry, right. where they're doing fine, on even financially, True. but the fear of what you just talked about, yeah. the things you actually lost, yeah. It's causing them to be at the doors of divorce. Yeah. That's right. Uh, this is maybe a side, but I know there's people listening, and I've counseled other contractors after this, but they are afraid to talk to their wife. Mm -hmm. They put the bills aside. They don't discuss it with the them. Secrecy. And I think that could have been a big mistake for me, mm -hmm. not going to her and saying, this is where we're at. I've led this company. I've done these things. Here's where we're going to go together. And, and I think you're right. That, that has to happen. Um, and, and so another emotion that we had was, uh, around Christmas time, I was talking to the bank saying, do I set up Christmas decorations? Do I get a tree for my family? You know, am I moving out tomorrow? No, no information from the banks, um, is getting notices on your door at dinner time with your kids. You know, I, I'm sure I, I know other men who have hid them from their wives, take them off before they get home to not let their wife know that their home is in foreclosure. And ours was, and they're knocking as we're eating dinner with our family saying your home is in foreclosure. We already know that they don't need to be at our door. You and know, the, the feeling of, yeah, the timing of you're wicked. eating dinner with your kids, not knowing how you're going to pay for everything, and they're reminding you in that situation. And uh, very stressful, very gut-wrenching, um, but we did, we lost our home too. Uh, wow. We had a short sale that we negotiated for a long time, and at the last minute, the bank said it was in our best interest to foreclose, even though everything was approved for the foreclosure, for the short sale. It was all approved in writing, and they wow. said, we'll for foreclose, and you need to be out in seven days. Wow. wow. Was yeah. that at Christmas? No, that was actually in, in August. My wife was praying very earnestly that our kids could finish the school year. That was a prayer that God honored with her that she was praying regularly was, Lord, please let my kids finish the school year. Wow. And, uh, and they did. We moved in August. What wow. did you learn in that whole season? Yeah. There's a lot of lessons. I mean, just the realness of God. Uh, I learned how to pray for other people. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you go through hard times, the classic thing you hear is, I'm going to pray for you. I'll agree with you in prayer on that. That's very important, and biblically, that's what we need to do. But I learned that people don't need to hear, I'm going to pray for you. 
they need to hear your voice. Encourage them and pray right now. Mm-hmm. Right now. And call the Spirit into that situation and call God mm-hmm. into that situation and, and, and bring prayer immediately. And that was something I learned immensely is when you talk to other people, it's, it's so casual to say things are going to get better, there's hope. But I learned what real hope meant. Mm. You, and what did it mean to you? For me, it, it just meant that God was there regardless of the outcome, regardless of the situation. He has a plan for our life. He has, he has things that he's working out in me to be able to carry that plan through the mm-hmm. process. Um, but the bottom line is you learn what it really means to get next to God. There was a mm-hmm. time where we were still in our home. I went on my knees every morning and every night because I couldn't make it through the next day. Wow. As a man who's supposed to be running his family, wow. leading his business, that's everything that I'm supposed to be getting mm. flushed down the toilet. Yeah. Mm. And I don't believe I did major things wrong in this. I had the 33% de- debt to income. I had, you know, two so months savings in the bank. This was by just the rules. Yeah, You're... I was doing the things I should be doing yeah. and and failure was coming. And there yeah. Wow. Jer, I know that the toughest thing for you probably was letting go of your staff. Mm-hmm. Um, did, how did your staff bear through it? Did they have the faith that you have? How was that dynamic? I remember taking one to lunch and letting him know that things were getting really bad. I wanted to pull us through, and he had a family of his own. His wife was stay at home like mine, and uh, he said, well, should I be looking for side work? Should I be trying to figure out what to do? And I said, well, I think you should consider your options, and I'm going to do everything I can to turn this around. Wow. Wow, and, wow. and that's emotional. If you know that your family is going through all this drama, you may be putting that on someone else as well to wow. have to let them go. And so wow. I held on to them for a while. Lastly, Jerry, it looks like you're not where you used to be. Correct. What happened in like a minute? Yeah. Um, praise God. He, he brought into my life the company I work for now. They said that they know that God has given me a vision and a direction in my life, and they want to be a bridge to that. So immediately our income needs were met. I had a full-time job of someone that's flexible and says, I want to see your calling be pulled out. Christian so company. it's a com- yeah, Christian company. company. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've given me a two-year contract. They said, stay as long as you want, but we need two years out of you if we're going to invest into a management position. So they put me to work right away. Um, and in fact, within the first year, was making more than I made in the worst years in my company. Mm-hmm. So... Um, so, there, I mean, turnaround like that was provision and income and housing. We were able to move right away to a place that I, I haven't talked to you about it yet, but the Lord gave me a vision one day of a place that we're going, of some work that he wants us to do for him. And, and I, I was able to draw on that, but this stuff was all moving in that direction. And the fact that our employer is willing to wait, you know. Well, and yeah. I want to say, too, we're going to do a whole nother series uh, Patrice on dreams and and we're going to have Jerry back to talk about that because it's awesome what God did in that phase of his life. But in closing, Jerry, could you just uh, talk about what is it mainly that God needed to align in you? What did he need you to come into agreement with him about Mm -hmm. so that um, you could be prepared for this next stage? It's all about relationship. Mm -hmm. And I didn't walk in constant relationship with God. And, and until you go through this situation, you don't know how to. Mm-hmm. Until you have to focus on him and learn him and learn his heart and understand how to hear him, um, you don't know how to. And so for me, the biggest thing that God wanted me to align with was not to do it on my own, mm-hmm. was to align with him, have mm-hmm. relationship, and do it together. Mm-hmm. Bad things does happen to good people. Oh, wow. But in the end, good people do win. And that's the story there. Uh, what was most powerful for me, Vicky, was the fact that that woman that wife mm-hmm. and how she bared through all that. That's right. If Jerry's telling the truth, his wife deserves an award. Well, I know them personally and I can attest that they have unity in their marriage and that is something that I wish every um, godly business person had and if you don't have that, drop everything else, go home and get unity in your marriage right. yeah. because it's really hard to go through hard times without that and you know, um, I, I just am so impressed with Jerry and his story that you know, I mean, you just could feel the agony of let, of all these losses, 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 losses. But remember where we're from. We're from heaven. We have abundance. And God needs to take us to that place of alignment so then he can move the provision to us. And so there is a part two coming with Jerry. We're going to have another um, interview with him down the road in the Kingdom Business Forum on dreams because um, God has lifted him out of the slimy pit, but it's not just because of finances. The other thing I want to draw out here is that he talked about, you know, it, you 
you know, it's not just about writing checks, right? The kingdom business person isn't just about writing checks if your business does well. That's such a limited view that the enemy wants to keep us into. He wants our whole life to be aligned, um, and it starts with relationships. So thanks to Jerry Tyndall for sharing that with us. And I hope you're blessed, viewers and listeners, of the Kingdom Business Forum. I know I have been today. And uh, you can catch all of our episodes on Facebook and on YouTube, so please connect with us there.